Tensions between Elon, SpaceX, and the government agency, the FAA, are increasingly escalating. However, this has not slowed down SpaceX's engineering teams, who are racing to complete tests for the company's ambitious Starship program, a project they've been nurturing for years. Let's find out more on today's episode of Alpha Tech. How is this legal battle heating up, and is SpaceX testing a new prototype to alter its current launch plans? On September 18th, SpaceX did a static fire test for the second second stage of Starship. Notably, this test wasn't for the prototype set to fly in Starship's Flight 5, but instead for Ship 31, the star of Starship Flight 6. That same evening, SpaceX confirmed the completion of the static fire test for Starship 6 test flight. Six-engine static fire of Flight 6 Starship. The test went exceptionally well, with close-up shots of Ship 31 and the six Raptor engines. This test is one of the final steps SpaceX routinely takes for its prototypes prior to launch. It indicates that with Ship 31 passing the test smoothly, it's ready to stack with its partner Booster 13. And if SpaceX can prepare this booster for the sixth test flight at a similar pace without encountering any obstacles or unexpected issues during testing in November, the company could potentially conclude its Starship testing program this year with a total of four completed flights. This is entirely possible, and as Elon has confidently stated, Flight 5 is built and ready to fly. Flight 6 will be ready to fly before Flight 5 even gets approved by the FAA. Indeed, SpaceX revealed that the FAA issued a delay notice for the fifth flight last week, which the company said was due to superfluous environmental analysis. The unjustified delay from the FAA comes as the agency requests an additional 60 days for investigation, citing concerns that catching Starship could produce numerous supersonic booms that could be heard in surrounding areas of the return site. It's worth noting that SpaceX had previously demonstrated that supersonic booms at various intensities do not cause harmful effects. So, does this mean that if SpaceX doesn't attempt to catch the Super Heavy on this flight, that Starship could be granted its launch license immediately? It's safe to say that Ship 30 and Booster 12 underwent significant changes to carry out an epic fifth flight featuring a Super Heavy catch, but with Flight 6 ready, as Elon suggested, even before the launch license for Flight 5 gets issued, this means Ship 31 and Booster 13, as long as they don't attempt to catch the Super Heavy, could be ready for launch even before November. What do you think about this? If the wait drags on, could... SpaceX fly Flight 6 before Flight 5? Let us know in the comments below. Continuing with the SpaceX activities at Starbase, although it may seem that the company's focused its attention on components for Flight 6, in reality, SpaceX is not neglecting preparations for Flight 5 with the highly important goal of catching Super Heavy's booster mid-air. SpaceX has been testing the tower arms while awaiting the fifth Starship test flight in November. On September 20th, SpaceX conducted several tests using the chopsticks. Unlike previous tests where the chopsticks were positioned at the lower part of the launch tower, in these new tests, SpaceX moved the arms to the top of the tower before carrying out eight separate tests. These tests will help SpaceX evaluate the vibrations and endurance of the top of the tower when subjected to significant pressure at its most sensitive point. Let's watch this video to see if the top of the tower shakes noticeably. Additionally, in the early hours of September 20th, SpaceX rolled out Booster 12 to the launch site, so we might even witness a stacking event shortly afterward. Amidst the bustling activity over at Starbase, tensions between Elon, SpaceX, and the FAA continue to escalate. It seems SpaceX and Elon are determined to reclaim their rights for their rocket programs this time. After the FAA imposed an unreasonable fine of $633,000 for a violation of launch licenses during Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches last year, a war of words and legal action has been ignited. On SpaceX's side, on September 18th, David Harris, SpaceX's VP of Legal Affairs, sent a four-page letter to the leaders of two congressional committees overseeing the FAA, outlining further objections from the company and reaffirming its commitment to safety. SpaceX forcefully rejects the FAA's assertion that it violated regulations, Harris wrote. The first involved PSN Satria launch in June, where SpaceX operated under an outdated license revision that specified its launch control room location and required a T-minus two-hour poll. In the letter, it was written that SpaceX believes that the FAA has sufficient time to approve the minor amendment. They also stated out of nowhere in the FAA's regulations that it does require a T-minus two-hour probe. The launch happened, no one was injured, and it did not affect public safety, with the FAA involved throughout the process, so everything was fine.
The second violation happened during the Jupiter 3 launch July, where SpaceX used a new RP-1 propellant farm without proper FAA approval. In the letter, Harris made claims that could support SpaceX's belief that they were permitted to use the farm. As with all commercial launches in the U.S., FAA is part of the launch process. SpaceX said the FAA representative on the control panel didn't stop the launch, and according to SpaceX, the FAA sent a letter to the company during the launch about the farm and didn't go into detail about the letter's content. Furthermore, SpaceX claimed that they called FAA leadership during Jupiter 3's countdown to discuss the unapproved RP-1 farm, and sending a letter that close to the launch was unsafe. The SpaceX letter said the FAA leadership on the call agreed with this assessment and did not direct SpaceX to stand down, nor did they pull their license. The FAA, Harris wrote, was failing to keep pace with the commercial spaceflight industry and suggested the fine may be the agency's response to increase congressional scrutiny of the FAA's oversight in the commercial space industry. SpaceX said it's been clear for some time that the FAA's commercial space office lacks the resources to timely review licensing materials and mistakenly focuses its limited resources on areas unrelated to its public safety regulatory scope. Asked about the letter, the FAA said it does not comment on active enforcement issues. As for Elon Musk, he's been frustrated for years about what he perceives as government inefficiency and has clashed with federal regulators. He's grown increasingly tired of SpaceX struggling to get FAA approval for rocket launches and new technology. After SpaceX sent a letter to the government, Elon immediately shared it, expressing his anger and saying the FAA leadership spends their resources attacking SpaceX for petty matters that have nothing to do with safety while neglecting real safety issues at Boeing. This is deeply wrong and puts human lives at risk. Additionally, Musk referenced NASA's decision to choose SpaceX to bring astronauts back to Earth instead of Boeing, highlighting SpaceX's importance and questioning why the FAA didn't find Boeing. NASA deemed the Boeing capsule unsafe for astronaut return, turning out of necessity to SpaceX, yet instead of finding Boeing for putting astronauts at risk, the FAA is finding SpaceX for trivia. Enough is enough. Both the FAA and Boeing declined to comment on Musk's post on X. This might be because there's no longer any excuse strong enough to counter the truth that Elon spelled out. Do you agree with this? Feel free to comment yes below. Honestly, SpaceX would prefer fewer regulations. Indeed, more regulations mean slower growth. However, it's also true that the FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation that oversees licenses is grossly understaffed. Congress is the only body that can actually address that. NASA is caught in the middle right now. They've got to be concerned because SpaceX is handling many of the most important missions right now, even for the next half a century. The immediate critical mission for NASA and SpaceX is Crew-9, but it's facing the possibility of getting delayed. The delay in SpaceX Crew-9 mission of the ISS is to allow teams to work through pre-launch operations and hardware processing ahead of the first human spaceflight launch from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, while also monitoring weather ahead of liftoff, NASA officials wrote in an emailed statement. The launch is now scheduled for no earlier than 2.05 Eastern Time, September 26th. If Crew-9 misses the SEP-26 opportunity, backup dates are available on the 27th and 28th. Crew-9 will be the first human launch from SLC-40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, which normally has infrastructure available for satellite missions. Humans require a launch tower with walkable access to the spacecraft, among many other changes. Crew-9 was originally manifested to launch four astronauts in the SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft for a mission lasting through February of next year. Now it's just going to send two aboard the SpaceX Falcon 9. NASA astronaut and U.S. Space Force Commander Nick Haug and Roscosmos astronaut and mission specialist Alexander Gorbanov. Haug will be the first active Space Force Guardian to launch into space, in addition to launching from a Space Force-operated launch pad. Crew Dragon's other two seats, which were supposed to be for a NASA astronaut Zena Cardman and Stephanie Wilson, will hold mass simulators instead. Wilson and Cardman remain eligible for future ISS assignments. That leaves room for two other NASA astronauts on the ISS to return due to being unable to fly home on their originally assigned spacecraft. The ISS astronauts waiting for SpaceX's arrival are Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams, who reached the orbiting complex June 6th during Boeing's Starliner's first crewed mission. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and catch you next time. Bye.